Hi and welcome back to our GCP Mindset channel and all topics on clinical research. Today we'll give some information on causality and random effects. More after the break. In part 1 to 3 in this video series, you learn some basics already, but keep always in mind, the causal relationship of a recovery to a therapy is only one of the possible explanations for therapeutic success in the study population. One alternative explanation is coincidence, which, for example, is given if in a study population spontaneous recovery occurs randomly with more frequency. Here you see an example of alternative explanations of a study result. In a large American study, for example, the consumption of Coca-Cola and hypertension were examined. In this diagram, the blood pressure is depicted in correlation to the consumption of Coca-Cola. At first sight, one might assume that people who drink a lot of Coca-Cola therefore have normal blood pressure and vice versa. Of course, this statement is not tenable because both factors are correlated to age. Elderly people drink less Coca-Cola, but they do suffer more often from high blood pressure and vice versa. The latter phenomenon is known as apparent causality, which occurs when any elusive or ignored reasons cause the observed effect, such as a therapy's success. An often quoted example of apparent causality is the claim that the world population is coupled to the age of the Queen of England, because both values are continuously increasing. Apparent causality may occur in clinical studies if the decision about the therapy to be used for a subject is dependent on the subject's characteristics. One example, in a study a new antidepressant is investigated, which has no antidepressive effect, but which is known to lower blood pressure now, all antidepressive study participants with hypertension are treated with the new drug and all study participants without hypertension are treated with a placebo. When determining the state of the subjects after treatment, the condition will be better in the therapy group than in the placebo group because the relief of suffering from high blood pressure entails a better general condition. The success of the therapy would therefore only be apparent in order to avoid this effect, subjects are randomly assigned to the different study arms. Apparent causality may also occur if the investigator or the subjects are informed about the type of therapy. The situation is comparable to the placebo effect based on convictions instead of knowledge. If a subject knows that he slash she has been treated with the new therapy and not a placebo, the subject will expect to see an improvement in his or her illness. This will be reflected in the description of his or her condition. Equally, an investigator who knows that a certain subject is being treated with a new therapy and not a placebo would rather expect to see signs of improvement in this subject. Both factors cause a distortion of data, which is termed bias in clinical usage. To avoid these distortions, a study is double-blinded, i.e. Neither investigator nor subjects are aware of the type of therapy being applied, placebo or study substance. This is also known as a double-blind strategy in contrast to special types of blinding, in which only the investigators or only the subjects are blinded. If a study is performed without any blinding, it is called an open study. To summarize it, in clinical studies, it is essential to create the arms of the study in such a way that the effect to be proven becomes clearly recognizable. Furthermore, when selecting the study design, it has to be ensured that causality can clearly be differentiated from apparent causality or random effects in the analysis. This is achieved by means of special statistical methods. So much for today on causality and random effects. We hope that we could give you some interesting information and look forward to see you next time.